Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Pierre and this is Simple Homebrew. I'm doing a Wine Expert World Vineyard Sauvignon Blanc wine kit. If you're interested, stick around. It's uh, quite interesting how the process happens. It's a great little kit and the wine comes out beautiful. So this is a minimum four week process. We start by opening the box and getting everything ready. So we'll open up the box, have a look what's inside. We've got our packet of goods, little bits and pieces. This is uh, bentonite, which we use in a sec. Uh, Shito san, I don't know how to say it properly and never have been corrected, so that's fine. This little kit on its own has all the little ingredients in it and instructions on how to actually go through the process of making the wine. In the kit, we have clarified, clean, uh, chemical cleaning, so it cleans out and clarifies the wine once it's finished fermenting. So we'll be showing you that in the future part of this video. Uh, but now, right now, all I need to do is set up my wine bucket. We already have our um, wine in a bag. I'll show you what the bag looks like in the kit. Now this is, we'll pull the, I'll pull it out just here. Normally I wouldn't, but I'll do it for you. Oh. That's our white wine, would you believe? Doesn't look white, but that's our white wine. So we have a lid, this lid here, basically, easily, pops into this part here, which I have shown you in other videos that I've done. So open that, bring that up, pop this part off. This is where the actual val uh, valve goes through. Now, it basically just sits within the slot. I don't know if you guys have used or drank cask wines before, but that's how you set them up and open their taps. This is very similar. So as you can see, I popped the nozzle in. The nozzle's still sealed. I'm not gonna open that up until uh, the time comes, but I'm putting this aside now. That's ready. It's got little handles here so you can lift the actual box out of the way and pop that there. And what I'm gonna do now is get my container that has, for some reason, sticky stuff all over it. So I must have splashed something out. So I have to clean this out. Once I've cleaned this out, uh, I'll come back to you and tell you what I'm gonna do next. So I'm happy to show you just what's in these packets. So in the packet, as you open it up, first you get your Chito San, Chito San. Again, I wish I knew who, how to say it, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I also have the instruction manual, which we'll see in a sec. We have potassium metabisulfite. We also have your yeast for making wine, your Kaiser Sol, depending on who you are, and your sorbate, so potassium sorbate. So that's all for clearing and killing the yeast once the yeast is pretty much finished, it's fermenting. And we also have a 30 gram sachel of bentonite. Bentonite is the start of your brew. You do this straight away. You dissolve it in your container. At the moment, I've got my stainless steel pot, which I'll put about 500 ml or so of hot water in it. Now, our temperature here is, we're in winter now, so it's pretty cold. So to get to keep the temperature at 20 degrees Celsius or so to pitch your yeast, um, I will just pour in hot water as I see fit and dissolve this. And then once that's dissolved, I'll put the rest of cold water and it should just come to a nice temperature for, for pitching the yeast. So I'd like to share with you a brew I've just made. The video will be on the link above. It's a nice little red wine. I've actually filled it too, too full, which is fine. I didn't want any oxygen to get in, so. It has a bit of a tinge to it. I think it's quite nice, tasty. But this wine from Wine Expert is class. It's really good quality, works really well. It's a nice clear wine. And it's very, very, very tasty. And a lot of time it's more sweet than dry. Um, I guess the fermentation on, on this kind of system isn't as high as some of the others, I'm not sure. But a very, very, very tasty red wine. Anyway, cheers. Uh, the kettle has boiled. So now we'll start working on, uh, by the way, make sure everything is sanitized and clean. 
spotless. I have a squirt bottle that I fill with sanitizer. I always use this for everything I grab before I put it in. I even sanitize the packets to make sure that none of the bacteria that may be on these packets get in there as well. Not that they're bad, but you know, we've got viruses and things hanging around, coronavirus. But I um, always do that, just tear it off. And what we do now is basically pour our hot water in. So they say around about 500 ml, two cups. So I'll pop it in the pot like that, that's probably enough. And now I need a stirring stick. And guess what, I forgot my bloody stirring stick. So I got my stirring stick. We have some hot water in here. There's probably about 250, 300 ml in there at the moment. But I'm just gonna go with that for a sec. Where did my bin tonight go? So what you do, just as a caution, don't pour the whole thing at once. If you pour it all in at once, it won't mix very well. So you just put a little bit in and mix it. Because it's just clay, basically it's an organic clay. It helps clear out your wine. But if you pour it all in at once, it will stick together and coagulate. So this is the best way, just sprinkle it in and stir until it dissolves those little bits. A little bit time consuming at the start, but it's, it'll, you'll love it. Because it's, look at that, it's already sticking together and I've only put a little bit in. Really, I have got only one hand, or two hands. I'm not an octopus, so I can't do this all at once. So it'll work though. So it doesn't matter, look, they, they say, they give you an idea, pour in 250 grams, uh, 250, sorry, 500 ml of hot water. They tell you to pour in 500 ml of hot water, but um, it's not such a big deal because we're trying to dissolve our bentonite. It'd be great if the bentonite was given to us in a liquid form. That would make it so much easier, right? Nearly lost it. Anyway, I'll stir this up. I'll get all the lumps out and get it all nice and clean. I'll give you an idea what it will look like once I'm done. But like I said, it's just basically a organic clay and I believe it came from uh, volcanic regions. It's nicely dissolved. There's a couple of lumps there, but they'll be fine. They'll dissolve into the wine anyway. So we'll finish up there. I'll pop that out of the way for a moment. Give this a quick side rinse with the hot water. Okay. That way it's nicely dissolved and in the wash. So there you go, so nicely dissolved then tonight. So now that's dissolved, I'm gonna put the concentrated grape juice into my vat, my pot. Pop the lid off, the yellow lid here is, can be quite hard to get off, a spoon works. You can pop it underneath the lip and pop it. I used this screwdriver a few minutes ago and just popped it and it came off nice and easily. There is a tool you can actually get to take these off. I'll pop a link for it if you like, if you wanna see what it looks like but I don't need it because I've got it off. So now, this is a reason why you pop it in a holder like this, is so you can actually pour it straight into your, your vat. Look at that. It's a very um, bright brown wine, isn't it? It's like it's good. Concentrate. We need, um, to make this a 23 litre batch. So what I'll do in a minute is refill this bucket, this pot, with another 10 litres, which I've just put in 10 litres of concentrated grape juice. And now I'll just finish, let that drain out. Anybody need to go to the toilet? All right, I'll go fill this up and I'll get back to you guys very soon. While it's there, I'll pop the lid on to make sure nothing gets in it. So I filled it up. So there's about another 10 kilos of, or 10 liters of water in there from the tap. Now remember the tap water is oxygenated, so it'll have a lot of oxygen in it. What I've done is just basically poured the water in the bucket in the refilled the bag up with water to rinse it out to actually get the rest of the concentrated uh, grapes out of it, grape juice out. 
and should leave me with about 20, 20 odd litres, about 19, 20 litres of now diluted grape juice. So what I'm doing with this, is I'm actually gonna put this into my Firmzilla. My Firmzilla is a pressure fermenter, but it's also a normal fermenter. Now I've wor worked out with experience that if you use a pressure fermenter and use pressure fermenting with wine, it really carbonates the wine, which is not ideal. Just so you know, the foam is not harmful at all. This is a diluted acid-based sanitizer. Uh, so diluted that it won't even cause any issues with you. So what I've done now is, of course, emptied it. I now need to pour my wine in there, which is uh, probably a mistake, filling it right up in here. Uh, where's my spoon? I'll have to quickly stir that. So I'm gonna quickly stir it because um, hopefully there's no sediment on the bottom. Just spray a bit of sanitizer on my stick and give it a quick stir. I think it'll be okay, but I'm just making sure. Done. And now I'm gonna pour it into my fermenter. Hopefully it pours, just like that. You ready for spillage? Probably not. Can you tell I've done this before? I've spilt it before, a lot of times. Just so you know. So while I'm pouring it in here, you guys need to see that basically what you can see is this is getting really well aerated. It's got a lot of air in it, which means it's getting a lot of oxygen in the actual grape juice. It smells quite nice. But it was a mistake, this is getting very heavy. Whew, that's a load, whew. Give it a break. What I've done is I'm just going to put a bit of hot water in there as well. It is quite cold. No, but it is cold in Gippsland at the moment, so it's going to happen. Okay, so we're at about 21 litres. So what I'm going to do is top that up to 23 litres. Because it's wine, the wine will not foam up like beer does or uh, wort. It will just, uh, hasn't got as many proteins in it, so it's just a juice. So when it ferments, it won't really be foamy. So it can have a small gap above the wine while it's fermenting. All right, I've just filled this up with a little bit more water. It's cold water. I just want to bring it up to 23 litres. It's up to 22 and a half, uh, 21 and a half. And now we're getting close to... All right, we are now at 23 litres. That's taken into account, 23 litres is taken into account that I've got a yeast bowl. I do like a higher flavoured drink. So once it finishes fermenting, I'll probably be left with about 22 litres. So, which is fine, because it's a one litre yeast bowl. So what goes in there will be tipped out. So I'll, I'll get a little bit less, but it'll still be beautiful and flavoursome. So what we do now is we actually put the lid on. Now this lid is a pressure lid. Um, I've got my sanitizer, so I'll quickly sanitize the ring. The washer, there's a washer in here. Now I had to, with this from Zilla, I had to actually replace the washer with a, um, a thicker one. It was 0.5 millimeters bigger. The reason why, there's a bit of a, something in there. And I've washed this completely and it's still got dirty. The reason why is uh, it was leaking. So for some reason here wasn't perfectly round. So it was letting air through. So now it doesn't, so it's really quite good. So at the moment, it's in a pressure fermenting situation. Oh, you know, <laughs> I nearly do this every time. We have to put the yeast in. I have to put the yeast in. It's uh, EC 118. It's, uh, it's a sparkling wine yeast. It's not a sparkling wine. 
Is the cap sad? No. Is Sauvignon blank? Sparkling wine? Oh, it isn't anymore, because I don't like sparkling wine. Okay, so our yeast packet is opening. <laughs> so I'm opening our yeast packet. Oh, it smells like bread. Hope you can see that. Bit dark, we'll put it onto that one. Oh, we'll put it onto, ah, oh, we'll even put it onto this one. Can you see it? No, you probably can't. It's gonna be a bit out of whack. No matter, we're gonna pitch our yeast anyway. Over here, you guys, all we're doing is throwing it in. Just like that. Yeast is in. Doesn't you have oak chips, that's good. So the instructions say, pitch your yeast, stir your yeast into your grape juice, and then take a gravity reading. Well, I'm not gonna do a gravity reading because I don't have a gravity reader at the moment, I broke it, which uh, I guess happens. So I uh, will just presume that most factory built kits like this will be all the same anyway, so most of the time you'll be pretty right. Just make sure it's finished fermenting before you start your next step. So what I have now is the finished fermentation of the white wine that I'm doing. So we have our firmzilla. We have all our yeast at the bottom in the little tub and the rest of the wine is in the chamber. So the good thing about that is it'll be much easier to siphon it out and try and remove all the sediment that's at the bottom. We shouldn't, really shouldn't be able to get that sediment in at all. I will close the valve so I can't access that and we'll be right from there. So now I'm gonna siphon out our wine. say that using the firm Zilla to ferment this wine was not a mistake it's quite good it actually gave me more uh, product so basically I only lose a liter I used to lose at least two or three liters so this is awesome so as you can see the carboy well, as you can see in the video the carboy almost filled right up I now have to degas it so we now will degas it so to degas it, I uh, basically, <laughs> you or you, which one? Come on, stop fighting, you two, come on. You, I'll talk to you, all right. To degas it, all I have to do is basically take this wooden spoon, which is plastic, <laughs> sanitize it, and actually use my drill to actually spin it until all the gas seems to be released. So I'll do that for about 10 minutes, reversing my direction. But before I actually start degassing it, I'm actually going to add the two packs that we need to add, which is the potassium sulfate and the potassium metabisulfite. So I'll put them in now, and then once I've done that, we'll start stirring. So in goes the potassium sulfate and also potassium metabisulfite which is there to basically help it clear. So we'll leave that. I'll squirt it with what I have in here. There's only a little bit of sanitizer left. So I'll squirt my pole, <laughs> squirt my stirring stick with um, sanitizer, just to make sure no bacteria has developed or grown on there while it's been sitting around. Put it into my carboy and start spinning. What I'm doing is I'm actually degassing my wine. So taking the gas out of it, also stirring in a metabisulfite, metabisulfite and potassium carbonate. Potassium metabisulfite, 
and potassium sorbate. I'll get it right one day. So I'll do that. So every 30 seconds I'll just reverse the drill. It's sitting on the bottom, so that's good. Do it the other way. So once I've done this, once I've done this, I'll be back. Now I've stirred the gas, hopefully out of the wine. I've done it for 10 minutes, reversing my, um, reversing my stirring stick each time. So all I have to do now is add my Kaisersol, leave it for 24 hours, and then put in my Shitasen, and then leave that for about 14 days to hopefully completely clear it out. Once it's cleared out, then I can bottle it. So I have my scissors. I have my sanitizer. I'll just spray the scissors a little bit, just to make sure the sanitizer doesn't, ah, sorry, bacteria doesn't get into where I'm going. I know it's been mixed up. This will all kill it anyway, but we do it anyway just to be absolutely sure. So I'll pop this Kaiser sole in, just like that. This is all about clearing. It doesn't say anything about stirring it, so I'll just twirl it around at the top there, just like that. Hopefully it will just do what it has to do. And all I need to do now is put an airlock on. Here's my sanitizer. With sanitizer in it. That's my airlock. I mean, now, I got this on eBay, guys. I couldn't find it anywhere locally. Nobody had any, had it. And it's really, really handy. If you ever need it, uh, and let me know, and I'll share a link with you on eBay. <laughs> I'll share an eBay link with you where I got it from, and it works really good. So what I'm doing now is just filling this uh, airlock with just sanitizer. Uh, and all that sanitizer will do is just stop any kind of bacteria going back through our wine. So right now, that's done. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave that sit here with the air lock on for 24 hours. And I'm gonna come in and put the shitasan in there. Shitasan, come on. How do you say it? And then um, we'll see what happens, eh? So see you guys in 24 hours. G'day guys, it's now bottling time. My brew has finished fermenting, finished clearing. It is ready to put in the bottles and that's what I'm here to do today. So have a look at that, nice and clear, pretty precise, bloody beautiful by the look of it. I have tilted, I've put a bit of paper oh, under here just to uh, tilt it a little bit so I get a little bit of less sediment on the back side of the bottle. I don't know if I have to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to siphon this out now into bottles, but first I'll have to clean the bottles. So to first clean the bottles, I need to make sure all the water is out of them, and then chuck them into some sanitizer with the lids. I have a big barrel of sanitizer here. You can see it, and uh, now you can see it. And I haven't got a camera up there, that's just another camera. So all I'm doing now is basically opening all my bottles, Tipping out the water that's in there and popping the bottles into sanitizer. So once I'm done, I'll get back to uh, filling them up with the new wine. So we'll see you soon. Now I just want to quickly give you guys a heads up. I had a comment just recently on a, one of my wine videos and then the comment was, I hope the sanitizer tastes great. Now I just need to let you guys know that I use Stella Sand. Stella Sand is a high quality sanitizer. It's a no rinse sanitizer. Uh, so that means that it won't create flavor in your wine. When you mix your sanitizer, it's 1.5 to 1,000. So it's 1.5 mil to 1,000 milliliters of fluid, water. It doesn't adversely affect anything. It just kills the bacteria that's, that it gets in contact with. Uh, just so you know, it's a misconception that sanitizer will hurt or damage or make your brew taste weird. It certainly does not. And I can vouch for that. I've had now 
four batches of wine and they've all been great. So just so you know, don't fear the foam. That's what it means. It means the, the foam is just bubbles made from the sanitizer, but it's so diluted that it's never gonna affect anything except the bacteria. You might even preserve the wine a little bit. I'm wrong. So what I've got guys is 30 bottles, recommended about 30 bottles to have ready to uh, fill. And those 30 bottles, hope you can see them really well, I will fill using a siphon. And with the siphon, I have this, which is my rubber glove. I just butcher up a rubber glove, cable tied it to here, and the grip from the glove will hold onto the siphon and stop it going all the way to the bottom. Now, I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom because I don't want to pick up the sediment that's left behind. As you can see, there's a ton of sediment in there. Hope I'm not making you dizzy. So what I'm gonna do now is just put the bottles into my esky so I don't make a mess, and then prepare it so I can actually start siphoning. So I'll be back with you soon. So we ended up with 28 bottles of wine. Very happy with that. Smelt really good. I can't taste it at the moment because I'm doing uh, dry July, so I'm having a break from it, I suppose. Looking for my, after my health, and in the meantime, I'm actually uh, looking after, hopefully, some people and raising some funds as well for charity. So what I'll do is I'll pop a caption up here, just so you guys can see what it tastes like, uh, if you're interested. And I hope this wine video helped you. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. I've been holding on the case There was something we could fix But it's all over now Yeah, it's all over now